Hello everyone, this is Jim Okrasinski with this week's lecture video. So uh, here, beginning in the announcements page, just looking at the uh, schedule real quick, I want to talk about the first draft. I know everybody's going to get into discussion board number two and, um, and the dialogue with Dave activity there. So um, please, you know, develop some answers, really think about your topic. Um, at this point, you've done your annotated. You've completed your double entry. You've worked with some quotes and you've got your thinking down. So at this point of the research process, you should be able to discuss at length uh, those questions about your topic. So please, uh, I'm really looking for some engagement with that dialogue with Dave. So uh, up first, I want to get to the course unit and talk a little bit about the first draft, which will set us on our way if we get into the chapter four unit now <clears throat> the first draft uh, will be doing uh, a little while after we get back we have to get through exercise 4.3 but i want to talk about uh the first draft and it's exactly what it is a draft of your research essay or what we sometimes call the consultation draft um, i will provide some additional drive instructions for how this will work uh, in the drive folder the course folder but um, I just want to run through the uh, first draft. So uh, the draft itself is worth 50 points. <clears throat> Peer review in this instance is going to be a separate process. So um, you can earn all 50 points as long as everything I'm looking for is at least attempted or included in some way. All right. Um, I'm going to offer some, you've got some numbered points here, and I I'm, I'm want to assure everybody that these will be followed in grading and assessing uh, your first drafts, right? All right, so uh, it needs to be on time with a completed peer review report. And that's pretty much standard. Satisfy a reader's desire for a well-planned text with a fresh, engaging purpose and deliberate organizational structure. And I'll cover that in a minute. Contain substantial material drawn from a minimum of six separate sources. Employ st strategies for paraphrase, summary, and quotation. You've already had some of this activity in a double entry, uh, including in-text citation, all right, and also a works cited page. I have to have, I have to be able to cross-reference uh, those um, in-text along with your works cited place, uh, page, sorry. Having appropriate format for readers' com comfort, such as double spacing, indented paragraphs, uh, standard font, margins, page numbers, in other words, MLA formatting. Now I'm looking between uh, seven and eight pages of text, okay, with your additional page for your works cited page, right? So um, always go through the first draft instructions. There is no revision of the first draft. So if you kind of slap this together or fail to meet the criteria that is listed in this assignment, um, there is no revisions on this. So look at this list carefully. Um, any revisions to the essay will be saved for the final draft. All right, um, we'll go through the Google Drive folder, probably in a screencast video uh, when you get back from break, but um, it'll be the same process with the GDoc link, right? So give this a good read. Make sure you have uh, some notes on this first draft. Uh, I've had students that'll get all 50 points, and then I've had students that will get like maybe 10 or 15 points because of uh, the first draft just doesn't meet the criteria. So that is entirely in your hands. Now, one thing I do want to talk about <clears throat> in chapter four is the organizational structure. In the textbook, Ballinger offers two distinct ways to organize your research essay. Whichever way you want to present your research topic is entirely up to you. All right. I just want to know which one, how you clearly lay it out so that I can follow it in material to me, how you want to treat your topic. All right. So the first one that's talked about in the book is called the delayed thesis structure. And basically the delayed thesis structure is where you present your, your research. All right. You look at the questions like, what do I want to know? Okay, you've got a topic, you have research questions, and then you kind of look at what's been said, which is what you've been able to determine through your annotated bibliography, your double entry journal, 
right? What kind of a literature review is there? What's the conversation around your topic? Who is saying what, all right? Next, you wanna to go to the idea of what do you think of what's been said? So this is your analysis and your critical thinking based on the information you've discovered, okay? Through your research, you have found more information about your topic and it should be clear to you uh, how you want to interpret the information, whether you agree or disagree, it's immaterial to me as long as you give me the how and the why of your thinking and back it up with the evidence presented in your particular research. What do I know now that I didn't understand before is a good thought process or generally a better meaning making extra uh, question here. Research and writing generates knowledge. What have you learned? Were you wrong in your thinking based on prior beliefs? What has changed? Okay, as we move through the research process and we look through our sources, not only look are we looking for information that confirms what we already think, but also in many ways can challenge what we think. So it's important to look at those particular points in your writing the research paper, right? What one thing do I most want to say about what I now understand? So for many students, there's what I call the aha moment, the one key piece of information that makes an impact. You take that knowledge with you for the rest of your life, and hopefully you've been able to extract that kind of information from the research that you have. And you wanna share it, right? So this represents a circular pattern illustrated in the text, okay? You can look at the circular pattern as what this basically is all about. You're presenting your thinking, you're presenting information, you're thinking, and then somewhere at the end, probably in the conclusion, you're gonna reach some sort of a thesis based upon what you've presented. It's very straightforward. You might come to some sort of a statement like a thesis statement. You may think that there are other areas of research that need to be performed on a topic. Maybe time will tell if you're looking at something like smartphones and Gen Z is your topic or social media. Um, relatively new phenomenon by you know humanity standards what will it be like in maybe five years ten years okay what kind of a longitudinal study can be performed so that we can see the long-term effects of um, social media and smartphones would be something to take away as a delayed thesis structure all right so um, usually your essay format will be something like this after your introduction Okay, you're gonna establish the significance and that's called the so what and who cares questions. Okay, what are other people saying? You think I found an answer, your delayed thesis. True exploration is open-ended. You will come to some sort of a delayed thesis and it may be, like I said, even further research. So the question and claim uh, structure is pretty much the traditional method, the linear method of presenting research. You'll open a paper, you'll come up with a thesis, and then you will basically spend the rest of the essay supporting your thesis, which would include, in the traditional format, some sort of a counter argument. You know, if I want to reach back for a second to the late thesis structure, you're going to have some pro and con type of uh, sources. And you can present that even in a delayed thesis structure, also uh, your counter argument, right? So uh, you look at this as more of the uh, problem uh, solution type. What's the problem or question the paper will be focused on? What's already been said about it? Okay, what's the conversation? And what is your claim or thesis? Right now, you may say, I'm going to use a delayed thesis structure because I'm still doing my research and I don't know what my thesis may be. But when you get to the point of writing the first draft, you may have basically uh, formulated a claim in your mind. You've come to some sort of a decision on this and however you want to present it, that is up to you. What are my reasons? What evidence can I offer? What is significant about my claim and what needs to be done? Remember the so what and who cares questions. The organizational structure here is pretty much standard, right? Introduction, state your argument, your claim or your thesis. What are others saying? Where is the conversation? What is your position compared to others, All right? And what is your evidence? I want you to show me and don't tell me. The significance, the, I keep saying the so what and who cares question, right? Why does your argument matter? These are all questions. 
The so what is, what does your topic got to do with society? Okay. The who cares question is how does your topic and your research affect people? Okay. So possible relationships, problem solution, cause and effect are well, those that you would really uh, focus on uh, some of the structures there. So those are the two organizational structures that you have the opportunity to employ in writing the research essay, the first draft. So uh, let me get out of the PowerPoint here. Something to think about. Ooh. Something to think about over the course of the next couple of weeks as we move into the drafting stage after spring break. So I believe that is about it I have for the lecture video today. So as I say in the announcements here, okay, be safe and enjoy as much of spring break as possible. And please stay away from the beaches in Florida. So good luck.